Hello, welcome to Coach's Corner. For those that are not familiar with me, I'm Patty Fosick, owner here of Nerdy Girl Fitness and also a health coach. And I am sitting here with our coach, Amanda, who um, is going to talk to us all about candida and candida overgrowth. Because I know that I've had these symptoms and I'm pretty sure that many of you have had these symptoms. And so I think it's very important for us to talk about and to learn about so that we can cope with it and to uh, and we'll learn how we can get rid of it and what some of the signs and symptoms are as well. Hello Amanda. Hi Patty. Thanks for having me. Of course. Um, so we were talking in the office about candida and it came up um, with some of the symptoms that you were telling me about and I was like oh crap I think I had that. <laughs> can you tell us about maybe what candida is and then what some of the symptoms are? Yeah so candida is naturally occurring in the body. However, uh, it can lead to overgrowth if we eat too much sugar, take antibiotics, consume too much alcohol, um, and there's other, lots of other factors as well, including um, toxicity due to mercury fillings in your teeth or um, public water, fluoride, and things like that. So if you already have a, a weakened immune system or um, are already dealing with lots of stress in your life. All of those things, of course, just add to an issue, um, any issues, but especially candida. Okay, and for those that don't know, candida is a yeast in the body. Um, so when we were talking about some of the symptoms, what really came, uh, made me think like, oh, wow, I had this, and like, no doctor ever pointed out. Uh, basically is on your tongue when you get white patches. So I remember like in college <laughs> and even after college, like constantly like brushing my tongue, like trying to get rid of like this like film on my tongue. And I'm like, wow, what's going on with my tongue? Um, and then also chronic yeast infections, which I've had that. I had chronic yeast infections in college and then after college. And it just amazes me that no doctor would be like, hey, this is like your fifth yeast infection. Let me take a look at your tongue. Oh, gee, maybe you have candida overgrowth. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about your experience with candida and how you realized that you had an overgrowth issue and what you did about it? Yeah, it's funny because I think my um, itchiness, uh, itchy skin and, and um, yeast infections and things came after. I think my first few um, indications were um, just a lot of excess belly fat and brain fog, huge one for me. Um, and um, let's see, I'm trying to think about something else. Uh, brain fog. Oh, lots of digestive issues. So I was diagnosed with um, colitis at 22 and then um, ulcerative colitis, no, that was the other one, um, colitis and Crohn's disease at like 30. And um, I just knew that, there, that it wasn't just um, something going on in my digestive system. I knew that there was other things going on that were contributing to digestive issues. Um, and so it, it also could be food sensitivities, um, and other chronic inflammation such as arthritis, which I don't have, thankfully, um, but all of those things kind of led up to me um, discovering and talking with several alternative health um, practitioners um, to discovering uh, a candida overgrowth. See, and I also have arthritis literally all over my body, so... Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised, and I ate sugar constantly. Not just sugar, but I was eating pasta all the time. Anything that came processed, I was big on frozen burritos. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, growing up uh, in a single parent household, like a lot of us have, or as latchkey kids, where we were yep. coming home alone and just pulling something out of the freezer or out of the cupboard so that you didn't have, and putting it in the microwave or, you know, eating it out of the box so that you didn't have to actually cook anything, all of that processed food, um, while convenient, really didn't have any nutritional value and was really not good for us in the long run. So having cleaned up our diets now and having to um, 
deal with some of the repercussions of that. Um, you know, thankfully there's lots of good information out there and more and more health practitioners, I think, are becoming aware of it. So what, what did you do specifically to help you get rid of the candida? Well, I still struggle with it, um, but um, getting rid of um, a lot of the dairy in my diet, so the only dairy I eat now that's from cow's milk is if it's grass-fed. Um, other than that, I use milk alternatives. And then um, getting rid of a lot of fruits um, and starchy vegetables and things like that. So even the sugar and fruit mm -hmm. can add to it? Yeah. Good yeah. to know. So um, things like blueberries are great because they're really high in oxidants as well and they're pretty low in the glycemic index. Um, but almost every other fruit after that is is off the table, at least until you can get your candida out of it, under control. Under control. And how do you feel now that you have it mostly under control? Um, I definitely have, um, well, let's see if I did actually have it under control. <laughs> we'll just cut that part out. I have in the past experienced uh, a lot, much better, like, clarity and I'm not so tired all the time um, and itchiness of course goes away and my digestive issues first and foremost I haven't been on medication for my digestive issues in years and yeah. that was the big thing for me because they it got to the point where they told me that I was going to be on medication the rest of my life and they wanted to put me on like serious inflammation, like IV drip once a month. And I was oh, like, geez. no way. Wow. And at the time I was maybe 35. And I was like, there's no way I'm gonna do this for the rest of my life. I just, I just knew that there had to be a better way. So I think what happens to a lot of us, and I'm sure that many of you watching this can relate to this, is that a lot of these symptoms too, mirror other symptoms mm -hmm. and mirror other conditions. So I think sometimes what happens is in the medical field, they're trying to find that medical diagnosis without just stepping back and saying, hey, why don't you try cutting some sugars out of your diet and see how you feel? Um, and they just jump to medications and things like that. So this is kind of a good uh, indicator to always be an advocate for yourself as well when you go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Um, because I didn't realize that arthritis was part of that. And if I had known, like I literally have been dealing with chronic pain from arthritis since I was in my late 20s, early 30s. Um, so, and I'm sure many other women out there can relate to that. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, look at your tongue. If anybody has white stuff on your tongue and you're like, what is this from? What did I eat? That's a clear sign that you have a candida overgrowth. Yeah, and there's also a spit test where you can spit into a cup and if it floats or sinks or has legs, you can look it up online. Um, there's a stool test you can do with your doctor. Um, but I even, and I had a, um, one of my gynecologists did a, a swab test for me as well. Um, and I would just say, do them all, right? Because there's so many different types of fungus and so many different types of um, strains that just because they test for one doesn't necessarily mean they test for all of them. And if yep. your symptoms keep persisting, just keep testing, you know, it, even if it's a your different, all of your do doctors. Um, and my chiropractor too um, ha has talked with me a lot about diet and different detoxes and things like that. So try your other healthcare professionals, not just your medical doctors, but if you see acupuncturists or even massage therapists or, or chiropractors, um, just to get some different perspectives on where these symptoms could be coming from. Now, Amanda and I are not registered dietitians, so we're just talking from our own experience, so I would definitely suggest talking to a registered dietitian as well who can give you definitely more information on, on candida. If you, if you think like, if whatever we've talked about, you're like, oh man, that's me. Talk to a registered dietitian as well and see if you can get some of these tests done. Um, because I think that uh, it, just from hearing what our members talk about, 
and, and think the cravings also maybe come with this oh, too yeah. oh, um sure. the sugar cravings mm -hmm. um and and i remember like now like i don't really have many sugar cravings and I also don't experience all the things I was experiencing. And all I did, and I didn't realize I was doing all of this, was when I changed my diet and I started just cutting out starches and, and cutting back on, on sugars. And then magically things like start to, you just start to feel better. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember even saying to my doctor, like about the brain fog, I remember saying to her like, I just can't think straight like I get to a point in my day where I just can't think anymore and it's just bad like I can't like pull out names of people like I remember being on a phone call with a really important client at the time and I called him like Steve and his name was David like I called him something completely wrong and my other client like calls me back and was like you called him by the wrong name <laughs> And I remember my doctor saying to me, oh, sometimes we just get foggy as we get older. And I was like 37. Like, mm -hmm. that's not, yeah, it wasn't like I was like 75. Like, I was in my 30s. Right. And and unfortunately, we try to sort of give, give ourselves a pick-me-up where we'll get some caffeine yep. or we'll, it maybe even we'll take a nap yeah. or, yep. you know, things like that. And sometimes it just need to take a look at your diet a coke and peanut m&ms that was my go-to snack in the middle of the afternoon yeah <laughs> now of, it's hummus and veggies lots of, <laughs> lots of sugar lots of um artificial colors and colors sweeteners and, and yeah. all that stuff yep yeah. well ladies there you have it i hope you learned some valuable things about candida and candida overgrowth if you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments below. And if you have any ideas or questions about any other topics that you'd like us to discuss, uh, just let us know. Thank you so much. Have a good day.